This is a prophecy. Christians from all over the world gathered in California at the Los Angeles Coliseum for the 110th anniversary of the Azusa Street revival that took place in 1906. What God is doing now is a precursor to many of the prophetic words of the coming outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's such an exciting encounter, not only to be a witness of what God is doing, but also to be a part of this generation that is happening. The last time such a monumental event took place at the Los Angeles Coliseum was during the Billy Graham Crusade in 1963. Now it is prophesied that Billy Graham's mantle has fallen across America. I know, check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Welcome to VFN TV. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and joining me just a moment is John Ramos. Back in 1963, in Los Angeles Coliseum, in August and September, Reverend Billy Graham, Evangelist Billy Graham, was having a crusade there with almost one million folks showed up there. And this is the very same Coliseum where they're having the, they just had on April the 9th, the Azusa Now Conference, which was so, so very, very powerful. But take a look, this is, this is the stadium was filled with uh, obviously about 100,000 at a time. But over the 21-day period, uh, Billy Graham uh, had uh, 900, I believe it is, 920,000 folks from all around the world came there. As a matter of fact, they even put a plaque up. Check this plaque out that they actually have at the Los Angeles Coliseum. And this is what it says right here. It says, Evangelist Billy Graham, Crusade for Christ, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, August 15th to, se to, to September the 8th, 1963. This plaque is to commemorate the 1963 Crusade for Christ with a total attendance of 920,927. It is so awesome to see what uh, evangelist Billy Graham did, but you're seeing now the same Coliseum. You're seeing the uh, Azusa now, 110th anniversary of the Azusa Street Revival. And this prophetic word was released there that was heard uh, by uh, the U uh, YWAM, Youth for a Mission uh, missionaries that went to Lou Engel, the founder of The Call, who put this whole event together with Bill Johnson of Bethel Redding, and he talks about the mantle that's been on Reverend Billy Graham, Evangelist Billy Graham, all these years is about to be on America. As a matter of fact, let's go there and join him now. It was five years ago that these YWAMers, circuit riders, came into my living room in Kansas City, and they prophesied and said that the call is having a shift, and it won't be just prayer, but it will be the proclamation of the gospel signs and wonders and stadiums will be filled and Billy Graham's mantles coming on this nation. For two days we deliberated and prayed over that word as we were closing our times together. A phone call came from Terry Bennett in Nashville. He called my friend and said, do you know where Lou Engel is? Tell him I had a visitation last night. Tell him the Lord said, there's coming a shift to the call, and it will not be just fasting and prayer, but the proclamation of the gospel, signs and wonders, and stadiums will be filled, and Billy Graham's mantle is coming on the nation. This is that which was spoken five years ago. This is so exciting to be able to see that. Some of the prophetic words that we have heard and been reported about Billy Graham is, when he goes to receive his reward to be with the Lord, that his mantle will literally break up. It's such a big mantle, and it'll go scattered throughout the world, including America. And we're looking at that day. It's almost like what they heard five years ago, what we've been hearing from others as well, what God speaks prophetically. And by the way, prophetically means, you know, God is telling us in advance through dreams or visions, through words of knowledge, what's going to happen in the future. And we start seeing those things come to pass. It gets very exciting because we know that God is in it. We're looking at right this very minute, this minute where you have a Pentecost moment, 110th year anniversary of the Azusa Street Revival, this charismatic revival that reportedly more people have been won to the Lord because of this charismatic movement that was birthed in 1906, I believe it is, at Azusa Street, is about to be reactivated. Just like the Lord told me when I was on a sabbatical with him, when he had a, an African, uh, South African pastor call me and said, America needs a second Azusa Street. Azusa 2.0, and we're seeing it take place even right now. 
So I want to encourage you, if you have not yet begin to just connect and see what's happening and say, begin to expect God to move. He's moving. I got a friend of mine that just reported that he's moving in, uh, the Lord's moving in New Orleans. He's moving in um, Alabama. He's moving in South Florida. He's moving I mean, all over the world simultaneously. It's like an end time move of a billion souls reportedly. The prophetic word is coming into the kingdom of God, which means you got to get discipled up. You got to get trained up because God's going to need you in this end time harvest. When we get back from this break in just a moment, we're going to talk about how this messianic believer, which means it's a Jewish man who received Jesus Christ as the, as the Messiah, he had a dream about, four, and four people called him. There were four roofs, and these four roofs represent th- something very specific about what's even taking place at this uh, Azusa Now event. It's just so exciting. Make sure you join us right after the break. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to invite you to VFN Dream Center Church. Listen, we love family. We're focused about, around reaching the world. But most of all, we just want to be able to honor God and connect with people who want to honor God. Are you looking for a family? Are you looking for a church family? You're looking to be a part of somebody who understands the great commission is first to reach the world. Well, we're doing it, and maybe you're supposed to be a part of it. As a matter of fact, you can join us this Sunday at 10.30 a.m., actually 10.15 a.m., at 6500 Pensacola Boulevard in Pensacola, Florida. You can even join us online at vinefellowshipnetwork.org. Listen, we're reaching the world together with the VFN Dream Center Church. We'd love to have you. Thousands of tourists visit Rome each year just to look up at the ceiling. What draws their attention is the magnificent work of Renaissance artist Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel. Each fresco is a scene from the Bible. The work of earlier artists cover the walls of the chapel, one depicting the life of Christ, the other the life of Moses. Michelangelo painted nine scenes running the entire length of the chapel. The ceiling begins with the creation from the book of Genesis and continues with the story of Noah. Michelangelo also included the biblical prophets and ancestors of Jesus. His painting of the Last Judgment on the altar wall of the chapel completed the Old and New Testament visualized in Michelangelo's work. Engage with the Bible in every sphere of its influence over the centuries. Experience the book that shapes history by visiting MOTB.TV. Take part in viewing this historic short film campaign by interacting with the film, the commercials, and the book itself. Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. Welcome, welcome back. This is so exciting about what took place at the Azusa Now. We need the testimony. I mean, we can't tell you everything. It's amazing. We have just a limited amount of time. 15 hours. 15 hours focused on, you know, Pentecost, upon, you know, the, that moment, the birthing of glory of God, yeah, yes. the glory of God, every tribe, every tongue, the humility was there. If you missed our previous program about, you know, so many things, one being the Pope Francis sent a representative from mm-hmm. Rome just to say, listen, forgive us for how we treated the Protestant church. You know, we were wrong. Even And he represented 150 million charismatic Catholics. Yes, they said they want to be a part of what Christ is doing. And everybody was coming there saying, I mean, there's so many different ones. But this dream is so important. This is one of Lou's friends. And uh, he's a Messianic believer um, and just lead the, everybody in the prayer for Israel. But right here he talks about that God gave him a dream about four Ruths. And this is so important because we're kind of in that last you know, think about this. The lineage of Jesus Christ, four of the women are Gentiles in, in his lineage. And the fact is, is that all but four, I believe it is. We'll hear just a minute. But the, the very fact that um, um, Ruth was redeemed as uh, a Gentile by a Jewish Boaz, that is the merger and the blessing. When we're like gleaming around the, gleaming around the fields like Ruth, you know, we go lay our... Lay our um, humble ourselves at the feet of Jesus and we get received into the family of mm. God. And all of a sudden, everything this Boaz is ours. This is exciting, but watch this. This is a powerful prophetic dream that he's going to share with you at the uh, Zuza Now uh, event, just this last uh, April the 9th. April the 9th. Take a look. And God showed us in this dream that the call of Zusa was about the healing of the races 
the uniting of the denominations, and the final outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We believe he wants us all together in one place and in one accord that he can send his Holy Spirit. Right now, we believe that it was critical that we honor the root nations, the natural root peoples of this nation, the native peoples, but the spiritual peoples, the spiritual root peoples, the Jewish people. Now we are moving into a transaction that we want you to engage with. It was many years ago that I and my friend were in Jerusalem and he had a dream. And it's quiet. And in this dream, he received a phone call from four Ruths. Ruth Prince, Derek Prince's wife who loved Israel. Ruth Graham, Billy Graham's wife. Now I believe this moment is about that. And Ruth Heflin, who is a friend of Israel. And the fourth Ruth was Ruth of Ruth and Boaz who said, your people shall be my people. I knew the dream was that there was coming a call when the Gentile Rus would begin to unite together all across the globe and begin to declare, your people will be my people. We're in that moment right now as my friend Rabbi Sobo, Jason Sobo shares, we are going to begin to proclaim what Ruth proclaimed, believing that shockwaves will go all over the globe as we make this co th this covenant to declare that your people will be my people. Shalom, everyone. Friends, I believe we are in an epic moment in history. Amen? Friends, we are in a John 21 moment where the Lord is about to tell us to cast the net and there is the greatest catch the world has ever seen. It is about to come now. They were fishing all night and they cast caught nothing. The Messiah said, throw the nets on the right side of the boat. Why on the right side? Because that's a sign of love. That is a sign of unity. That is a sign of relationship. And until we join nets, the great catch won't come. John 21 can't be fulfilled until John 17 is fulfilled. Messiah prayed that these and those would be one apostles and believers that were standing there with him those were the nations that were to come and when these and those Jew and Gentile come one what happens John 17 23 they will be perfected in unity and all the world will know that Yeshua is the one sent by the Father the Messiah of Israel and the nations and the story of Ruth and Boaz that's what it's about. Ruth was a Gentile Moabite woman. She married a Jewish man, but he passed away. She went back with her mother-in-law, Naomi, to Bethlehem, Beit Lechem in Judea, and she wound up falling in love. She was at first destitute. She was homeless and hungry, but then she attached herself and entered into covenant relationship with the Jewish man, Boaz. And when they came together in covenant relationship, she didn't just get the gleanings of the field, she got the full inheritance. <laughs> Friends, there are four Gentile, there are four women in the genealogy of Yeshua Jesus. They're all Gentiles. Why? Because the kingdom of God the messianic king and the kingdom cannot be birthed unless Jew and Gentile birth it together. And when we do, we see the kingdom of God come on earth as it is in heaven. But that's why the enemy has historically tried to divide Jew and Gentile because he knows when we unite in the Messiah, we become an unstoppable force for global change and transformation. Friends, it's time to heal the original schism in the church. 
the original schism in the church, the first division was a division between Jew and Gentile. And when we heal that schism, when we repair that division, we will see the great catch of John 21, the fulfillment of John 17, that the Lord has promised. Come on, do you believe? Let me hear you. Friends, when Ruth and Boaz unite, Jew and Gentile and Messiah, it's going to release the greatest sound of revival the world has ever seen. When the roots and shoots come back together, Ruth and Boaz unite, there will be healing for the nations and healing for Israel. Amen? What happens when Ruth and Boaz find themselves connected and covenant in the upper room, there will be a worldwide outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So we are going to take a moment here with my Messianic rabbis and Jewish leaders from around the country standing here with you and Lou. And there is covenantal blessing when Ruth and Boaz, Jew and Gentile, unite in Messiah. So together, we're gonna make a prophetic declaration. The same words that Ruth spoke to Naomi. And we believe that when we recall these words out together from the heart, God is gonna release the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, in greater measure in preparation for the great catch and revival that is coming. Are you ready? First in English, then with my Arab brother here in Arabic. Because friends, Isaac and Ishmael are coming back together. The family is being healed. We are one in Messiah. The peace process can't fix it, but the peace, Prince of Peace, Sar Shalom, Yeshua Jesus can, amen? Come on. So, okay. We're gonna lead together. Prepare your hearts. You need to do it. We need the we need we need the Boaz. Hold on a second, Lou. Just share your heart about Ruth and Boaz. See, I believe right now, this is again, it's a covenantal moment. When Ruth said, Your people shall my people, your God shall be my God, she was making a sacrificial covenantal declaration someone's getting healed praise God come on give a shout to God brothers and sisters we are saying we are setting our face to bless the Jewish people we're turning the hearts of the children back to the fathers. Can you engage with me right now? Don't look over there. Engage with me. Ruth chapter 1. Ruth. Oh, that's in your Bible. Is it on the screen? Can we get that Ruth on the screen? It's on the screen. I don't have it. Everybody, right now. I'm not sure what they have. I want you all out loud just to begin to declare it together. One, two, three. Go ahead. This is the story of Ruth is the story of every believer that accepted Jesus Christ and became a member of the body of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. All across this place, would you stretch out your hands? 1967, the Messianic movement began and Jewish people started getting saved. It's 50 years, it's Jubilee. We're declaring Jubilee, it's time for another great Messianic awakening. Lift your voices and begin to pray. Father, we pray in the name of Yeshua that you would loose a worldwide Messianic movement. A great awakening. Go ahead, lift your voices, keep praying. Living God, awaken the Jewish peoples. Bring forth Romans 11, 12. The fullness of the Jews. Life from the dead. In Jesus' name, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Awakening to the Gentiles. Abba, we're asking, open the eyes of the nations. Help them to understand the Jewish root of the faith, God. Just hold hands together. Jews, 
Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.